the entire tollway system. What does that really mean? It carries the most amount of uh, uh, trucks, it carries the most amount of uh, passenger cars, it carries the most amount of freight. Uh, it's very vital to not just the tollway, but to whole regional transportation. We got more than 100,000 vehicles a day at any point in time uh, on this road. We've got our highest truck volumes on Interstate 294, about 24,000 trucks a day, uh, which are very vital for, for all of us. Um, you know, this corridor, we're, we're very fortunate. We've got O'Hare at the north end, we've got Midway at the south end, you've got multiple intermodal rail facilities, Union Pacific, uh, you've got Cape Pacific uh, with the intermodal right behind us that way. That way. <laughs> This is east, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now I, got, now, I, right, now I know where I am. Uh, so a lot of intermodals through here. You got Canadian Pacific. We've got the CSX down at the south end, Burlington North. A lot of uh, major freight that happens up and down the core. U, uh, uh, UPS major facility down at the south end. FedEx at the north end. Uh, got a lot of interstates that interface with this roadway. Interstate 90, 190 at the north end. I 290, kind of in the middle. I 88, I 55. Uh, there's a lot of growth that's happening. There's a lot of growth in the communities. You know, your community has changed. Every community up and down the corridor has changed. So what we're trying to do is plan and prepare for that growth to make sure that the, this region, the tollway, your community uh, sustains and grows uh, economically and, you know, and prosperously. What are uh, recommendations? So given that, you know, with, with all the, the growth and number of trucks and vehicles and everything that we have on this road, um, we also have the worst congestion that we have anywhere in the tollway system. I don't have to tell you that. You probably see it. You probably hear it. Maybe you don't hear it because when you don't hear it, that means traffic stops. Uh, but along this corridor, it, again, by far the worst uh, congestion that we have on our tollway system. Every single day, we know it's northbound. Uh, it's congested. And the southbound all afternoon is congested. Uh, so we came up with a recommendation. We took, basically did a lot of early planning work, got, did a lot of outreach with the Bunch of different groups we have access to organizations, we reach out to communities, we talk to trucking associations, railroads, we talk to environmental organizations, economic development organizations, to kind of come up with the priorities. What things should we be looking at as we go through this project? Four priorities uh, uh, that kind of came clear is one, we gotta do something to address congestion. You, got, you know, you can't just have this, this major roadway being congested all the time. The second thing that we were asked to do is to do something about access, to basically fix the existing access points that we have today. Because we know they don't work. You had a lot of half interchanges that were built for 1950 style traffic. Well, things have changed. Uh, back in the 50s when the tollway was built, nobody envisioned your community and every other community up and down this roadway being what it is. So do something about congestion, look at access. Fixing uh, existing access or providing new access. The third thing that uh, we were charged with looking at was doing something that uh, addressed freight. Uh, again, with all the trucks that go up and down this corridor, what can we do to make sure that we can accommodate them safely? Uh, safely? So looking at opportunities for truck parking uh, up and down the board, looking for opportunities to make to enhance access into these rail facilities uh, up and down the board. Again, what can we do in, in, uh, to improve that? And the fourth thing that we heard we thought was a little bit of a surprise, um, but you know now that we've been out here more and more, it's stormwater management. Every time it rains, I mean you've got creeks that run through this town. Uh, you realize whenever it rains, you know it's it's, it's pretty tenuous. You might flood, your, your streets might close. So to do something about stormwater management, not just on the toilet, but look at some regional solutions. So those are the four priorities that we started uh, with this when we engaged in this project. We came up with an overall recommendation. I'll give you kind of a high level overview of uh, the, uh, the 22 mile stretch. It wasn't a one size fits all solution. We wanted to be, we wanted to make sure that uh, whatever we recommended was uh, really representative of, of the needs of, of the, the roadway and every little piece is definitely unique given all the different interchanges that we have. So it wasn't a one-size-fits-all solution. Generally what we're doing is we're recommending adding capacity. Adding capacity is basically an initial lane. Uh, some areas we're recommending one lane, and other areas we're recommending two additional lanes uh, throughout the corridor. So let me kind of talk, I guess, from south to north, I'll talk loud. Uh, down here at the, at the south end of 95th, uh, we'll, we'll travel to the north. We're talking about adding one lane each direction. Today there's four lanes in each direction on Interstate 294 throughout the entire stretch. Uh, so we're going to go from four lanes each direction to five uh, each direction from 95th to about the uh, uh, just north of the mile long bridge to about I-55. I-55 is the traffic that leaves the tollway and comes onto the tollway. So just at the I-55 interchange, we're not adding any recommending adding new lanes. It's a lot of new ramps that come on and off the tollway. So we're going from five. Uh, we take into new traffic from basically north of I-55. If anybody drives on this roadway in the morning every single day, no offense, but about it, traffic starts backing up from I-55 all the way up to North Avenue, making a little bit of a break. It opens up, and then you're picking it up uh, congested again uh, 
pretty much all the way to Bob Warren, and that's what breaks you down. So through from I-55 to uh, really about the I-88 area, we're recommending two lanes, two additional lanes in each direction. So going from four lanes to six lanes to here. This is the area where we have the most amount of uh, 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 congestion uh, building up into this area. We block uh, people to get into this area. We block from the, the, from the south and to the north. So there's a lot of demand uh, up in that stretch. So we're recommending two lanes in that stretch uh, from about uh, 55 north to about I-88. The stretch between I-80 and 290, again, we've got a major reconfiguration happening. Um, again, if anybody drives on the tollway first, appreciate the business. But if you drive on the tollway, you see at Interstate 290, it's an interchange that just doesn't work. When I talk about uh, impact on freight, if you drive in the northbound direction every single day, you see trucks lining up at 290 to do basically a U-turn movement, miles long of trucks or trucks coming out from 290 trying to get on the Interstate 294, creating miles long backups on the 290 um, and, and 88. We've got a lot of weaving, a lot of friction. So that stretch, uh, we're not recommending any additional lanes per se, but we have a major interchange a reconfiguration that's gonna happen. Uh, we're building, uh, and if you're familiar with the area, it's a lot of slow moving ramps, a lot of weaving that happens through there, causes a lot of backups. We're doing three flow and direct connection ramps through there about a $507 million improvement at that interchange alone. So that's a major enhancement for, not just for the tollway, but for the entire region and, and mobility. More from this, so from about uh, North Avenue, so North Lake, uh, uh, Elmhurst area, from North Avenue in the northbound direction, we're adding one additional lane direction, and a short stretch, we're adding two lanes. That dash line, so I'm too short, I can't make it all the way there, but I can use a shadow puppet uh, over here. That dash line, it's a uh, new road that we are building right now around the west by, uh, west side of O'Hare Airport. It's called Interstate 490. If you've driven on the, on the west side of the airport, the tollway recently opened up a project called Illinois 390. It's, if you ever heard of the road, it's called Elgin O'Hare. Yes. Didn't get to Elgin, didn't go to O'Hare. We are now on the doorstep <laughs> of O'Hare Airport. We are about a mile away from the just uh, uh, advertised as the, the next contract to get us um, even closer. Airport. But that's only part of the project. We're building an entire western bypass around O'Hare Airport to really to alleviate some traffic. Right now, today, everybody only has one option to get uh, really to the north, and that's coming through your community. We'll have now opportunities to get uh, to, to split some of that traffic. So, lightening some of the demand in 294, and providing better access to the west side of O'Hare Airport as well. Uh, in your area, so basically what we're doing through here, in the northbound direction, we're adding one lane each direction, so we're going, uh, recommending from four lanes. So basically from uh, that dash line, which is about Wolf Road-ish, uh, where that totally goes over Wolf Road, we're adding one lane each direction all the way up to Balmoral Avenue in the northbound direction. In the southbound direction, we're recommending a very short stretch uh, where I-190 and the Balmoral ramps come on, we're adding two lanes, and then we're, uh, just add one lane where it merges. So uh, going from four lanes to five lanes in each direction to <coughs> this guy. Also part of this project, um, what we've done, if you've driven on Interstate 90, we've done it on there, we want to replicate it. The inside shoulder on Interstate 90 today, we just wrapped up construction about two years ago on I-90, it's a little extra wide to shoulder. We call it a flex lane. That flex lane on Interstate 90 allows us really to use, to allow pace, to run a dedicated transit service on our shoulder system. Um, Pace, for probably the last oh, six, eight months or so, has been running uh, um, buses on our shoulders. They've seen a 40, a 40% increase in transit ridership. <coughs> we're smart enough to know that we can't just keep thinking we're gonna add more and more lanes to solve our congestion problems. We need to come up with some new solutions. So we're adding this inside shoulder for some, some uh, transit, so dedicated transit. So. Uh, so some viable north-south transit corridor is also part of our uh, uh, recommendation. There's also some other improvements that we're talking about. I can talk about the new uh, reconfiguration of the 290 interchange. We're putting in, uh, this a little bit more later, a new southbound exit at North Avenue. Uh, and there's some other new interchanges that we're building along the way. There you go. Time frame. Uh, again, very high level construction timeline in the overall project. This is a big, big, big project for the tollway, the largest that we've ever undertaken. Um, so we're up to the task. So let me kind of talk 
to you about uh, the timeline. Obviously, up here in Chilla Park, you see construction is happening now. You're one of the first areas where we started construction. So uh, we're basically the O'Hare Oasis, the peak all the way at the top from the O'Hare Oasis up to Baltimore Avenue. That construction is going to happen in 2018 and 2019. So by the end of next year, we should be wrapping up and maybe some cleanup work in 2020. But the bulk of the work will be done by the end of next year. South of, of the O'Hare Oasis to North Avenue, uh, where we'll start building our tie-in to the new Interstate 490 and some uh, reconstructed widening happening through there. That work is actually started now also. Can't really see it, it's down below. Uh, if you drive on North Avenue or Lake Street, you start seeing some of our crews doing some work on the railroads and doing some fiber uh, optic line relocations, other utility relocations. <coughs> that work will occur from 2018 to 2020. Um, the remainder of the corridor, uh, basically, well, let me say this. So when we do construction, I think it's important to know. Today, there's four lanes in each direction. Uh, throughout the duration of construction, like you've seen it today, we'll maintain those four lanes of construction. It's a construction zone. It's a work zone. We don't want to, uh, we don't detour traffic off the tollway. We don't like to close lanes on the tollway. Uh, we hate to cram your local roads with tollway traffic. Traffic belongs on an interstate. It should stay on the interstate. So we'll maintain four lanes of traffic throughout the duration of construction. To do that, there's a few projects that we have to, uh, things that we have to do is to get some early projects done to make sure that we could, um, during construction, shift traffic around and use all the pavement that we have. So we have a couple uh, early, we'll call, I'll call them enabling projects, projects that will allow us to pursue uh, some construction. I'll talk about a couple in particular. Like I said, if you're on North Avenue, we're, um, we're done in 2020. South of here, uh, kind of give you the bigger picture of the overall corridor. We're going to be going through about 2026. But that's kind of standard construction throughout the entire corridor. There's two major projects that we have to do first. There's Burlington Northern Bridge over the tollway in Hinsdale and Western Springs area. And there's the Mile Long Bridge down uh, in basically the Hodgkins Willow Springs area. Those two bridges to maintain four lane traffic throughout construction, those two projects have to get done so we can shift traffic around. So we will start work on the Burlington Northern Bridge over the tollway. Right now it's a very, very narrow opening, similar to the O'Hare Oasis where you don't have sufficient wood to shift traffic around. That work is going to start in 2019 and we'll go through 2022. And kind of the same thing happened on this mile long bridge. We're building the entire new bridge uh, over this area. We'll leave all the way to traffic open. That work will happen from 2019 to 2023. When those two projects are done, about 22 time frame, then we'll be able to start construction on the mainline portion. Uh, 1994 south of North Avenue. Uh, so that one, that one, so right now we're looking at going to 2026, uh, but we're always looking to see what we can do to move construction schedules up. The blue section here in the middle, that's where we have our planned uh, improvement at I-290, 294, and I-88. That right now, the construction schedule is uh, through 2026 from about 2021 through 2026. Let me talk about some specific uh, projects. Uh, through this area. All right, I'll just hone in, hone in on this specific area. So, uh, as you've seen, work has already started up here, uh, really on the inside uh, of Interstate 294 on the main line. Um, so, I'll tell you about, again, very high level of what's happening here. You see it on a daily basis, so you probably know more about this than I do. I can assure you know more about it than I do because you're out here on a daily basis. <clears throat> so, we've got right now, uh, obviously, we've recently, um, Close the uh, O'Hare Oasis, so the over the road portion, so the concessions on the Oasis are closed, but the fuel stations remain open and will remain open. Um, the Oasis closed, I believe, was September 5th, is when it closed. It's still up. We're doing a lot of work on the inside right now to clear out some of the utilities, let the vendors clear out some of their uh, uh, their equipment in there as well. The reason that had to come down, 294, um, the width of it wasn't uh, with the the Oasis is basically a bridge over the tollway. That's all it was. There's two places in the United States that have this uh, over the road type configuration it's, uh, here in Illinois and Oklahoma. Uh, why it's Oklahoma, I don't know, but that's what it is. Um, but there wasn't sufficient width to add new lanes out of the tollway, so the over the road bridge had to come down. We've been working with the village on a redevelopment opportunity. Yes, yeah, very, very unique opportunities that come with this project if you look at it the right way. Um, more traditional oasis is off of one side of the road or the other. If you drive anywhere, you know, pretty much across the U.S., if you go to a rest stop or whatever it is, it's usually on one side of the road. 
Uh, what we're looking at is how to reconfigure something within the existing footprint of the Oasis to, uh, to basically provide a new uh, rest stop, new Oasis, new businesses, whatever it might be out there. And we're really letting the village kind of take the lead on, on some of that work right now. So the Oasis is now closed uh, for that reason, and we're gonna start working on what we can do out of redevelopment. Um, other improvements through here, so the, the stretch of uh, from basically the Oasis North to Balmoral, the work happening through there is a patch, an overlay, and a widening. So basically we've got relatively decent pavement on here that was done not too long ago. Um, didn't need to be fully uh, torn apart, so we're doing uh, some patching. We're gonna do an overlay or basically resurface of it and add in some capacity through there to get a uh, five lane key direction. <clears throat> With that, also there's some bridge work, uh, bridges carrying uh, 294 over Irving Park, Lawrence, CN Railroad, uh, all three of those bridges in Chiller Park are tentative, uh, those are currently being rehabilitated. Uh, so you've seen, this, seen some of those impacts. Um, most of the work that you're gonna see this year is either on those bridges or <coughs> on the inside shoulders. So right now we have traffic shifted to the, uh, to the outside. <coughs> The reason we, uh, we've had to close the Irving Park to and from the north ramps is because when we shifted the traffic to the outside, there wasn't sufficient distance and uh, to bring traffic on and have them merge onto the Interstate 294 safely. So the ramp configuration that you see at Irving Park Road is going to stay the same, to stay the same as it is today. Um, the reason they're closed is more of a safety issue than any reconfiguration. So I know we've heard a lot about that. Why did you have to close the ramps when you're not really not doing anything that you're on staging? Um, it's more of safety. You don't want to, it's a short weave distance today. And it was even shorter when you push people into the live construction zone. So we shut it down. Um, those ramps will be uh, reopened by the end of this year. And if we can target sooner if we can. Um, and I want to make it very clear, we do not intend on doing uh, anything uh, in the southbound direction to close those ramps. It's really just one of those, uh, the, the ramps that, that are closed today that are probably more of the safety concerns. Uh, so that's 2018 construction. 2019, we're gonna shift our efforts to the outside. So uh, in 2019, we'll do uh, basically our shoulder work, our pavement widening, everything on the outside noise walls will all be replaced up and down the entire corridor. So the walls that are there today, there will be new walls, and the new walls will be based on uh, the new number of lanes and also the new traffic volumes and, uh, and the volume both in number of uh, vehicles and, and the volume is in terms of uh, how loud it is. So we're gonna build new walls to address uh, basically more lanes and, and greater number of traffic, greater amount of traffic coming through. So those walls will be uh, installed by the end of 2019 as well. We don't have the exact timeline on them yet, but that's so all the work that you see in 2019 will be on the outside. Um, 